Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, Joey McGuire talks about his Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week at quarterback. Also provides an update on injured starting left guard Weston Wright and questions like, why did Joey McGuire ask a ref at halftime if he drank any beer in the first two quarters? We'll investigate next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech. Your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Glad to have you with us once again on Locked On Texas Tech. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team Every day, all across the USA, worldwide, and intergalactically even. I'm Casey Cowan with the only Chris Level, and uh, it's a heavy day for Tech Head Coach Joey McGuire. Following his weekly meeting with the media, we'll have plenty to dive into coming up with the head man. First big win now in the bag. Has to be a little bit of pressure, uh, maybe taken off of his shoulders, Chris, but of course the biggest opportunity yet and the biggest challenge still lies ahead and you could detect that in his uh, approach today because he referenced several times well we're beyond 24 hours so we're I'm talking about the last one today but we're already on to the next one yeah they are and and I and I, I don't I, I get what you're saying and I I agree with you on the pressure thing although they they're probably just just rolling but I think that like those of us can look at their season and the way it lays out and say okay yeah that that was that was a, a a nice win that you have in your back pocket, and now you're guaranteed to go into conference play with a winning record. I completely agree with you, but you know they're they're trying to go go three and zero in the non conference, and um, but yeah, th- this one's this one's going to be because it's your first road trip, you know, under this head coach, and to some of these you know transfers and some of these freshmen. I mean, this is their first road trip. Uh, and it'll be under the lights uh, on primetime and national TV, even the whole bit against a, a, a highly ranked team, in, you know, in the ACC. And, you know, I wish – here's what I wish. It was, I wish the scheduling gods would have given you – because you have Texas next weekend. I don't know, you know, if there's any sort of look ahead, but you can't tell me that everybody's not aware of that, right? Sure. Clem- Clemson on NC State schedule – it's just one week later, you know, mm. it's, it's two weeks from, from this Saturday. Cause I would have loved to have seen Clemson uh, be on NC state schedule a week from this coming Saturday, but it's UConn. So uh, anyway, um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think this is, this, this one will be fun and it's a lot more fun knowing you just beat Houston. It wouldn't be, it'd be kind of a little more tense and stressful. I think if you had you not beat Houston, cause boy, you start looking at how this thing could go and uh, being at one and one and try to figure out a way to win and not come home one and two and, you know, all those things. But uh, we don't have to talk about any of that. Well, and, and one thing we'll be able to talk about now that maybe I didn't quite see coming uh, was Texas Tech traveling with the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week <laughs> in quarterback Donovan Smith. And yeah. here's head coach Joey McGuire on his second QB one of the year. But he did a great job. Um you know, I said it, and I want to say it again. I mean, in this day and age, for a young man, um, and he, you know, he's he's well, I guess he's what a sophomore or uh, sophomore um, to not be named the starting quarterback in this day and age, or either in the portal or your lip stuck out that you trip over it every day. And he wasn't that guy. You know, he was a guy that like he prepared the week before to play in the game, and then he had the opportunity, played well. And then he prepared to be the starter. I think he would be the first one to tell you that he's got to prepare um, even more, uh, especially this week, because we're going to see a lot of pressure. They're they're, they're known for their pressure, and uh, so you know I'm proud of him. You know, and I'm happy for him. And uh, you know, it said it on the edit. I just saw it on Twitter. It said, "What next? What's next?" Uh, that's not a question. So. Um, he's mm. got to enjoy that. Mm. And maybe that's for less than 24 hours, and then he's got to get ready. I, he was in there. He's probably still down there. But he and Nehemiah Martinez and Jordan Brown, I think there was more and more guy down there. They were down there watching film, um, you know, and that's what those guys do. They're leaders and get prepared to play the game. 
I, I know when when we left the stadium this past weekend, uh, you felt fortunate to win. You you were thrilled that you win and you figured out a way to, to do it. But I think most of the fans weren't super high on what Donovan had done that day other than maybe the final play. And it's, it's just – and then you see him named the Offensive Player of the Week in the Big 12 one – it's crazy that he was a backup, you know, a week ago, and now right. he's the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week, okay, because he was also the Liberty Bowl MVP and all these things. Two of his last three games, he's taken home accolades individually. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and and I think career high in completions and attempts and the yards thrown for and all that stuff. If you just – and it doesn't work like this, but if you just take away the, the interceptions – you know, it, it it changes the entire dynamic. I think, though, that he gets this award, one, because, you know, there, there was not as many, you know, standout performances in the league this year. I, I I did think if I'm Marvin Mims, I may have the whiteout at Oklahoma, I may have had an issue. He had like seven catches, 160 yards, and a couple of tutties. But that, granted, it was it was against a no-name opponent and all well, that. Well, they've all got issues. Where, why otherwise would they be in Oklahoma? So <laughs> we just start there. But That's, that's right. That's right. Don't worry Spencer about it, Sanders. Marv. Spencer Sanders, maybe, you know. but uh, He's but, been Tech's best player before on a weekend. So uh, <laughs> This is I true. It'd be like another Red Raider winning it almost if it was him. And, and they're hoping <laughs> that he doesn't do that anymore. But his numbers weren't <laughs> yes, too gaudy. Uh, but, but that's a big win versus Arizona State. Uh, Covered. Covered, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. But uh, I, I think it's because you you walk it off, and and it's a ranked opponent. I mean, there, there's some sure. there's some ingredients there. And his numbers, other than the interceptions, they weren't bad. But it's hard to gloss over three picks and then hand somebody an award for that because ultimately that's how QBs are judged, even if it was their fault or not. I don't. This one of these wasn't tipped up. Maybe there's a wrong route. Maybe it's because he's got pressure in his face or all the above. But yeah, it's strange. I, I when, when I heard that today, I was like, "Huh, okay." You know, I'll take but it. The, yeah, no doubt. Good and good for him. And yeah, sure. And, and all that. And, and I think he got coached hard over the weekend too, according to, to Zach Kittley. He got he got coached really hard, but he'll he'll do it with a smile on his face. And and he he's he's the Big Twelve Offensive Player of the Week. So how about that? Well, I think you take it into context as well. If you're just talking about one particular column, of course, that column can be backbreaking sometimes as far as. Uh, giving the football away, but uh, you're also talking about huge and one game-winning play, um, but uh, fourth and 20 completion, among others, including the game-winning touchdown, and uh, obviously somebody who showed a lot of resiliency and uh, proud for the guy and uh, glad that there's a little pat on the back. And you notice there in what you just heard from Joey McGuire that uh, he mentioned how quickly uh, Donovan's experience and enjoying that should be, I guess, <laughs> at least as some advice before they get back to work or uh, sounds like remain at work potentially. You know, some of the work that's going to be done as far as heavy lifting uh, this week remains there up front on the offensive line in tandem with Donovan Smith, trying to establish some chemistry. One of the wildest things that I've heard so far uh, this season in just a couple of weeks, Chris, was that uh, Donovan Smith prior to week one had had no reps with the ones. He and Baron Morton were splitting reps with the twos. It was all Tyler Shuck, and then he's thrust into action. So last week was his first really full preparation experience. Now he's got another, and uh, Coach McGuire spoke also about that work in progress, estab establishing quarterback and offensive line synergy. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to help being uh, game two with those guys. Um, you know, we – we definitely can play better. <clears throat> and, you know, we had a staff meeting this morning to challenge each other that, you know, a lot of times things, when you win, you can look past because you're winning. And uh, that's not just staff. Like, we want to fix, no matter if we're winning or losing, we're going to make sure the issues, whatever shows up on film, that we're attacking, you know, and, and uh, giving up the sacks, We you know, we've talked about, uh, I think, at the end of the day, the film's going to be really good because uh, the guys, <clears throat> some of it was getting beat early and having to settle in. Some of it was being a, a lot of a brand-new offensive line. And then, uh, you know, Kitley would be the first person to tell you, and he probably will. I mean, some of it is play calling, making sure we're ahead of the sticks to where we don't have to get in 
third down to where they know that we're throwing the football and they can pin their ears back and really come after us. So got a mixture of things that we could keep getting better at and learned a lot from that game. I, I love the, the the part about challenging each other and holding each other accountable and all that, mm-hmm. even after a win and trying to fix, you know, because, hey, look, man, you know, you, you, you beat Houston, but but there was plenty to – criticize if you if you want to use that word in that game or to work on or to try to fix I mean it was Joey's you know his, his verbiage the other day special teams weren't special um we, we we lost contain or I discipline in that first play out of the third quarter we know some of the mistakes of you know that the offense made or Donovan made or, or whatever but uh you like hearing that man better to try to fix stuff uh, after a win than a loss man there's no doubt about that I've heard the term I violations now Okay. Yeah, there you Which go. Which is what I've had to write a few people up for when I was flexing on them at the country club. Pull back in the day. I violation. I violation. Write you a ticket. My number's on there. You, yeah. Did you go tank top or was this like shirtless or I mean like most what? of the time it was uh banana hammock, then on to the mankini whenever that uh innovation came about, or at least more popularized by a and, a, and a cowboy hat. Yeah, once in a while, but sometimes you want some sun on the face. You want to get that tan. Uh, hopefully, Weston That's Wright a- is not laying around getting a suntan this week, Chris. I practiced that segue all day long. It's a prof- hopefully, you're it came professional. Out smooth. <laughs> yeah, you're professional. Yeah. I want to. I want to let everybody hear this quick bit of sound from uh, head coach Joey McGuire once again on Weston Wright, the left guard who who leaves the game starting left guard and uh, was a guy that came in as one of those more so known commodities as far as what you're going to get out of him or could expect from him up front compared to some of his uh, colleagues there heading into 2022. So not good news to see him on the shelf, but still sounds like clearly uh, that a work in progress as well and uh, a chance to get him back on the field in Raleigh, North Carolina, Saturday night. Here's Coach McGuire. Thing with Rhett Weston, it's a little bit different. It's the same ankle that he rolled during camp. Um, and so <clears throat> his will be, and he's probably 100 pounds heavier than Krishan. So his will be a little bit different. Um, we'll, we will... He will be a guy that will be more to where we get to fast Friday. If he feels like he can go, then he'll go. Yeah, I, I, I think you could prepare for what's right not to be able to go this weekend. I mean, it, it's uh, an ankle sprain is one thing. If you start kind of hearing high, you know, and, and especially if it's a repeat ankle uh, issue, which is what you, you hear Joey saying there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I, I think it would be a pleasant surprise if Weston could play. And then if he does play, at what level is he at? I mean, is True. this 80, 80%? Is this because this is a defense that's going to, again, pressure the heck out of you? That, that's kind of their identity. They're going to try to blitz and do some different things and, and, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, maybe looking at Jacoby Jackson and Landon Peterson, uh, unless we have a Cade Briggs sighting or something like that. that I'll take it. You know, yeah, that, I mean, because now, even if uh, even if Briggs like weren't to like start, I mean, if Western Wright's out, I mean, who's your swing guard? It's probably Briggs, I would guess. I think it should be, shouldn't it? Yeah, well, you if would he's certainly living think up so. To yeah, you would something. certainly think so. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I hate not being with that one of your 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 just solid offensive lineman if that is indeed the case. But uh, probably rather have him for Texas if that's what it takes. Don't want to push it, but uh, ankle sprain can be tough for a big boy. I'm ready to see these guys back at it again, particularly Caleb Rogers. I mean, that experience could be uh, one that makes him a better football player, obviously. <laughs> He'll have that opportunity. So uh, hopefully that'll be the case in what we see in coming weeks because, boy, he had his hands full and then some with uh, uh, the AAC, I think, Defensive Player of the Week and a guy who was making a dent in the AAC record books <laughs> as far as all-time sack numbers yeah. on Saturday, unfortunately. So uh, here we go. You get another opportunity, right? Yeah, and, and I I think uh, for Caleb, you know, like for example, may, he he's a pretty energetic and outspoken type guy, and he's that's just how he plays. He's got this this really um, outgoing personality, and he'll kind of talk some smack, and he's just really energetic, and you know, and and all those things. But yeah, he he didn't, you know, I don't. Is it fair to say he didn't play well? Uh, giving up four – I don't know if those were all on him. I guess my point is maybe it uh, brings you back down to earth a little bit. Maybe it's a, it's a kind of a humbling experience. Maybe it's like, hey, 
time time to get real serious about this because the competition is about to be you, you're going to start to see power five competition real really through here on out and so uh because nc state's defensive line and, and texas defensive line i mean they, they, they maybe have sunday type guys up front so oh yeah um anyway but yeah I, I like your point there ready to see them back at it and i know they are too i mean bested by a, a good player I mean, there's no shame in that necessarily, but it's about the response and then hopefully not being uh, handed handed some things that way again. So he'll get an opportunity coming up Saturday night, as will the offensive line entirely, to see what type of progress they've made here this week. Uh, coming up dead ahead, we'll get back to head coach Joey McGuire, touching on something that he thinks is there that maybe a fan hasn't noticed. Also, a few standouts uh, after another round with the film from Saturday afternoon's affair. But first, I wanted to tell you about Upside. I know it's like a shot in the side, mm, a shot right in the side at the pump these days, but made a little bit more tolerable if you're getting cash back, which you can do with our friends at Upside. Cash back feels good everywhere, but the pump, the grocery store, restaurants, yeah, scratches you right where you're at. You're probably thinking it's too good to be true, but it's not. First hand can tell you it works, and that makes Upside a no-brainer. So do what you do with a little extra cash back with Upside. Right now, get started with the free Upside app using promo code LOCKED. That's L-O-C-K-E-D, LOCKED, and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more in comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs. You can earn three times more cash back with upside so download the free upside app and use promo code lock to get five bucks or more cash back on your first ten dollar or more purchase that's promo code locked on the free upside app and get cash back now with upside Glad to have you along for the ride on Locked On Texas Tech with Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Taking a listen to thoughts from one Joey McGuire today. And uh, coming up in just a bit before we wrap it up, we will we'll get to questions like this. Did Joey McGuire offer a ref a beer at halftime or at least ask him if he'd been drinking any in the first two quarters? We'll investigate that. Uh, and was there a comment on cramping that was actually a jab at fake injuries? Uh, we'll get to that coming up before we are done. And you'll hear it right there from the man himself, uh, Texas Tech head coach Joey McGuire. But getting back to Coach McGuire, Chris, I wanted to get to a couple of thoughts that really were based in his two eyes, his perspectives, because he was asked about standouts from Saturday's ball game. And you may not be surprised to find that a lot of that was rooted in hustle plays, the guys that he highlights, three of them, and we'll get to who that is coming up in just a moment. Uh, but was also, you know, really asked about what what might be there for the team that fans are not noticing or is not all that obvious to a fan right now, but he's seeing it. Here's Coach McGuire. Fair factor. I mean, I, I think that uh, – I think you probably can see it because our guys are playing hard, but man, these guys really care about each other. You know, um, like Sir Roderick, perfect example, Sir Roderick. Um, there was no frustration Saturday. Uh, Taj was hot, um, you know, and I know, uh, you know, he wants to be in there and, and do well, but there was a point that he said, hey, roll with Taj right here, not to me, but with Coach Perry and it's just a high care factor of guys that want to win, that care about each other, um, you know, and pick each other up. Yeah, I mean, that, that was one of the things we talked about, Casey, is that Sir Roderick is kind of a non-factor in this game. Yeah. And I don't know how many times you, that's going to be the case and you're going to be able to live to tell about it. You know what I mean? I mean, sure. so, but but to the to Joey's point, it sounds like good team chemistry and good, you know, just good vibes and not ego and not, you know, hey, man, we won. It didn't matter who helped us win. We won and, and all those things. That's that's certainly what you want to hear. 
No question. And don't you think, I'm sure that, you know, really one of those or the, the running back room has to be one of the, the tighter rooms as far as, you know, chemistry among yeah. those guys, because you've got some vets there and you've got guys that I imagine are, are very close because really Thompson and, and Brooks have been uh, the two running backs that have been there to be relied upon. You've had like Xavier White pass through the room and then he's back in a different positional group uh, room and, and some other names pass through as well. But not really surprised to find that, that the chemistry uh, may be in really great shape among those guys. And yeah, I mean, if you saw what Taj Brooks was doing on the field, you would think he definitely looked like a player that was in a rhythm uh, because some of the lateral movement, which I love to see because you just kind of, I kind of forget about it because I think like, Taj run like bull and he does, but he's also got some of that, that quickness and some of those cuts you see in tight space, man, are, are just really impressive. But uh, I, I think that that's one of those deals that I felt like improved under Matt Wells, maybe some intestinal fortitude, a little care factor. I thought they were a little tougher minded in some cases, you know, you remember the halftime uh, when, when trailing record for Cliff Kingsbury and company, and I got a little better maybe in the previous tenure. And I hope it really explodes uh, under Joey McGuire. Coach McGuire touched on a trio of guys that it sounds like probably going to re really help solidify uh, that type of culture and uh, really help solidify a tough-minded football team. He was asked about standouts through his eyes. Here are the Red Raiders Coach McGuire went with. Irie Wilson um, has really surprised me, not uh, how hard he plays, but how hard he chases the football. Um, the touchdown by Nehemiah Martinez – is Red Raider speed and violence. I mean, the dude's a pinball. And there's Ooh. a couple plays like that from him. Um, so I, I thought that was – that's good. I think, you know, Krishan getting banged up there in the end zone, if you watch that full play, I mean, he's coming from the opposite side of the formation and played the play all the way through. And he he had multiple plays like that. The, the fumble that he caused was off of effort. I mean, just bottom line effort. We gave up – we had bad leverage on that play. Um, and just him uh, running that football down, creating that fumble, because that was a big play for them. And then, then it turned around to be a big play for us. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not surprised about any of those three, you know, names. I mean, we, we've known what Nehemiah could do from the time he stepped in here. He's now on scholarship, and he's – you know, he's just kind of a, a do it all thing. They talked about him throughout the spring and all that. Tyree Wilson, <clears throat> he's got to he's got to show this effort because he's got millions of dollars at stake. You <laughs> Very know, true. I mean, let's just yeah. And Krishan, I think, was thought to be one of the most important guys on defense just because I mean you don't what do you have like in junior college, like 150 something tackles in his, his sophomore season. I think but the year before he got here, I think he led the country in in, in tackles as a and, and you don't hustle and chase down the football, you know, and, 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 I mean, by mistake. Right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, you know, so I, I, th I think that's good. Uh, and, and I think it's important to call those guys out, you know, because yep. I think that's what this team's going to have to be. They're going to have to major in just effort and playing above their head and, and being blue collar, if you will, you know, and then I think that's what, that's why Joey's here and what he's going to have to tap into and what he's trying to tap into. That's a great way to describe it. Majoring in effort. Put it on a T-shirt. Give Chris <laughs> Level credit. I'll take a slight insider kind of commission. You know, family basis. Uh, coming up next, questions like, why did Coach McGuire ask the ref at halftime if he drank any beer in the first half? Was there a jab at faking injuries in Coach McGuire's comments to kick off the week? We'll investigate. And also, Coach McGuire did say something that was music to my ears. I'll tell you what it is coming up next on Locked On Texas Tech. But first, we're thrilled to be back and telling you once again about our friends at Jay's Salsa Company. It is the tailgate staple of 2022. If you're missing out, be sure to get to jsalsacompany.com right now. Chris, I feel like I'm converting folks all over campus each game day. We had another tailgate opportunity uh, over the weekend against Houston and not too many more coming up. So don't waste any more time to get in and taste the flavor. Family recipe, Red Raider owned and operated. And uh, it's easy to find that red and black jar. Awful convenient, huh? In the grocery store aisle. 
Yeah, five more tailgating opportunities just for football season. But uh, yeah, United, United Market Street, HEB. Yeah, look for that red and black jar again. Support Red Raiders, man, and they're making they're cranking out good salsa. And uh, you know, and you get the holidays after football season. We all oh, yeah. love some chips and hot sauce. So dig in, man. And, and again, order it online. Go find it at the store. It's all there, all over the state of Texas, and I think some in New Mexico too, Casey. That's right. That's right. Uh, you can get it at most United Supermarkets, Market Streets, Albertsons Markets, Supermarkets, pardon me, in Texas and New Mexico, and right here in the LBK at HEB, or they ship anywhere in the U.S. at J Salsa Company. Dot com. You got a L O double T locked on Texas Tech, your team every day. Thanks for making it your first listen as part of the Locked On Podcast Network with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Time is almost up for today, but first, a couple more thoughts to get to from Red Raider head coach Joey McGuire. These some fairly interesting ones and maybe even pertaining to subjects that stretch outside of the playing field. A message to the Red Raider faithful from head coach Joey McGuire. One of the biggest things about us is uh, don't beat yourself. And knock on wood, we're one of the least penalized teams in the country, um, you know, especially whenever you take away week one, uh, my two penalties of the delay of game. And you know, I just want to ask our fans, fans to make sure, man, I, I, I love our traditions. I love everything about what we do at Texas Tech, and I get it. Um, and the tortillas fired me up. But we had a situation where Miles Price scored at the end of half, and, you know, uh, we had water bottles thrown on the field. The one that really confuses me is beer bottles thrown on the field, especially when they're half full or some more were full. Um, and that really confuses me because, you know, I'm, I, I like a cold beer every once in a while, and I definitely don't want to throw it away. Um, but I think it's really important to understand that, you know, they're a part of don't beat yourself. I mean, our fans – have a huge effect on the game and the passion that we play with. And the worst thing that could happen uh, coming into games to where we still have five at home that we get penalized because of something like that. I mean, that's like the worst thing as far as don't beat yourself. So it's really important to uphold all the traditions at Texas Tech, throwing water bottles and beer uh, bottles on the field are not one of our traditions. And uh, I want to make sure that that we, we take care of each other and, and do the right thing whenever it comes to that. And here's more from Coach McGuire on the process of uh, how it went down Saturday, including an investigation that seemed like on Coach McGuire's behalf into the beer drinking habits of an official. I had a warning at halftime that it happened again. We were going to get a 15-yard penalty, which we've already had. That's already happened. It happened last year. I could be totally wrong which one it was. I think it was Iowa State that we got a 15-yard penalty. Um and then uh, watching from our view, I can't see the stands, of course, uh, but whenever you see when Miles scores, um, you see bottles, you know, uh, water bottles and everything else. And the officials, that was right before halftime. So at halftime they came, you know, and the back judge said, man, I nearly got hit. And, you know, they were, they were pretty upset, and, you know. I did ask him, did they take a drink if it wasn't open? But, you know, he didn't think that was very funny at the time because he was pretty pissed that he nearly got hit. I get it. Um, I just, I just, man, I, I know how – I remember the Texas game when we played um, in basketball. And I remember um, one of our basketball players, our former basketball players, saying it before I got up there. You know, I mean, we're, we're building something and, and – you know, at the end of the game, winning and being able to come on the field like our fans did, which is the first time I've ever been a part of that, is absolutely incredible. I would not want to take away from that, um, but I, I just don't understand what you get out of that. And it's not its not a tradition. Like, it's – anybody and everybody understands the tortilla deal, but the other stuff past that, it doesn't make any sense to me. You know, and I don't know why any Red Raider would want to put us in that situation. There's a lot of people that have no idea about the tortilla stuff, but it's just been going on for so long. But yeah, he's talking about Norris Odiase 
uh, before that that game here in Lubbock and just like, hey, please don't. But I, 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 I'm down there. Uh, I, I did notice at one point, and it wasn't uh, the, the Miles Price touchdown had nothing to do with this. At one point, there was a water bottle thrown into the end zone, and and I think they they picked it up, and I think the official maybe said, "Hey, please don't throw anything on the deal." And there was a, a big deal on the. But I saw the clip, Casey, of this Miles Price touchdown, and I think I must have just after he scored, and it was away from me, and at the other end of the field, maybe where I was, or. I, I must have just been distracted or, or doing something else or, or paying attention to something else. But I've seen the clip, and there's there's at least six things thrown right there into the into the end zone on the field, and there's definitely two Mick Ultras and a, maybe a Bud Light. That, that bottles were for real? No, they're can they're, they were cans that I because they don't even sell bottles in the stands. Well, so. or, and maybe they're they're the aluminum bottles. Maybe. Well, listen, uh, there are a lot of things in the stands they don't sell in the stands. You feel me? <laughs> So I, I didn't yeah. know, but I, I also I, was wondering. My boot uh, has been filled with some of that before, way back in the day, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Absolutely. But I thought glass bottles, that that would be kind of strange. So you really actually could make out what you were yeah. seeing there? Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, I, I saw the sideline view, and I saw the end zone view. And, and, and again, it's fo- the camera's focused on the field. It's Got not you. up into the stand, so I can't see who's doing it or how far it's being thrown from. But that's over there in that one corner uh, in the north end where it, it's clearly the student section i have no idea if it was students there. and i don't know why they're doing it i don't know i mean because the water bottles are one thing i guess but yeah you're right it was the i mean there, there's beer splashing out of those cans maybe it was hot and they're like ah, this is warm i don't even want it anymore Boom. possibly i don't know but it, it's but that's not a, like that's a, a you problem if you got beer in there so long it's getting warm that's a you problem <laughs> It had been one thing if a Houston player goes over there and he's like guns down. I don't know, whatever, or it would have been Tyson, you know, like like you know, trying to piss him off. But I didn't see any of that. Your guy just scored, and it's like, you know, I don't. Maybe this was like the maybe you saw that back in the spring or even the summer with the Ole Miss baseball deal, and it's just beer showers, you know. Mm. Oh yeah, and, That's and every a thing time they hit a home for, run, yeah. oh, the, the, and it was in, in unison. They're just they're just spraying. Uh, college people and people from Mississippi, grownups from Mississippi. (laughs) I think I had to go around with the mayor of Tupelo once upon a time at the cotton bowl in 2008. And I won't even give you the hand gestures that he was cranking my way or the things that were being You went around with the mayor of Tupelo. Uh, That's going to be a whole separate, that'll be a Sunday. He had the uh, most teeth in the rebel section I was next to. So I assume that meant he was the mayor of their city. That being Tupelo. Is that Mississippi or Missouri? No, it's Tupelo, Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> we know a couple of things here. First, uh, some people just can't handle their their hooch, and there's going to be some idiots doing wild things. But we also know Joey McGuire implores you, don't spill beer. Yeah, just suck it don't down. Don't spill beer. Yeah, uh, the, the only guy that I've uh, that made it look cool to just to waste beer was Steve Austin, the the wrestler. Stone Cold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just just splash it, you know, just pour it all over himself. That that's that's the only time I've ever seen like wasted beer was like okay I'll sign off on that. Because Do you think uh, the ref was being coy and uh, not really giving <laughs> Coach McGuire a straight answer on whether or not they were taking a sip if it was unopened? I I, I, I would have loved to seen the the uh, facial expression and body language when that question was asked <laughs> because most of those officials. Sometimes you get a playful one or a talkative one or one that's yeah. trying to be nice, but most of the time they're kind of more often than not get off my lawn kind of body language. Yeah, or they want to coach and, you or whatever. I mean, yeah, you, and I'm guessing that he wasn't having it. Take a yeah, hike, you know, bud. Maybe yeah. you should have a sip, man. Loosen up a little bit. Good grief. <laughs> right. That's some so I, w- I wanted to be a conduit for a message from Joey McGuire to the fan base. Seems like Very he good. wants it out there, so you've heard it here on Locked On Texas Tech. Don't spill your beer at least on the field that's i think the like minimum minimum pour it, standard pour it on behavior. yourself yeah and then find, make, make sure the can goes in the in the in a, in a receptacle but don't yeah don't 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 throw it out on the field and i want to could have been bad i want coach mcguire to know that once upon a time when i did spill some in the boot it was because of a leaky flask it was not intentional it was a garage sale purchase you know should have looked into the seal i guess a little bit better, but I had to leave it there that day. But the Red Raiders got a big a flask win. is like a dollar ninety nine, and you bought one at a garage sale. Hey, it was engraved with oh, someone's what? initials. Somebody else's. I mean, I don't oh. know, but <laughs> <laughs> I was of that age. Yeah. 
You just lose your mind in sporadic moments. And I lost it at a garage sale that day. Very it nice. Be all right for the first quarter and a half, but then even the socks were buzzed. I had to drive. <laughs> Respect. There's so much to the boot there that day. <laughs> and I could do an endorsement on that boot for how much Jack Daniels or Jim Beam that that boot would hold successfully. Cause that's, that was like the initial shoey, man. I mean, we were passing it around, having a great time under the double T scoreboard. Are we still recording this part? Maybe I need to take the scissors to this. I'm not sure if all these secrets need to be told, but they kind of already have. So we'll just, uh, I guess, move on. Quit throwing your beer. Quit throwing anything other than guns up, please. And speaking of keeping the beer water to yourself, it's part of being responsible on a hot day like Saturday. You want to stay hydrated so you don't wind up looking like a lily-livered, cramping Houston Cougar, supposedly. We met as a team and went through why we won the game. One of the slides that we had was we didn't cramp. Um, you know, and there was some cramping, maybe, 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 maybe going on on Saturday, but it wasn't from the Red Raiders. What, yeah, what do you mean well, by that? Yeah, there, I mean, look. Uh, I, I, you know, and I even said this on the broadcast on Saturday, but, and I'm trying to remember the player's name. I think he was number three, I think, but he was the one that kind of, look, Dana and staff are trying to call timeout. They don't get it. And then somehow the signal is in and he just drops. And so, okay, let's stop what we're doing. <laughs> well, then later on in the game, he, he did the same thing, but he, like a lot of the tech players were like, Dude, you're soft. Whatever they were saying, and he's like, "No, man, I'm really hurt this time." Right? You know, I mean, yeah, I'm like, th- th- this is a maddening rule in college football, and there's really nothing anybody can do about it. And, and I'm almost to the point where so many guys and, and and like Matt's staff, and I think Joey's staff, they try to do this right. They don't they don't operate that way. But I'm almost wondering if they should, just because. Okay. It, it it's it's a way to get extra timeouts. It is a way everybody. So many teams do it. So many teams do it against you. That's really when we see it to stop tempo to whatever. And it's it, it's just it can't be officiated, and you can't call anybody on it. You know, there's no way to prove in that moment if somebody's really cramping or really hurt or whatever. And, and I mean, other than they have to miss a play, they should have to miss a series or a quarter. There's got to be some ramification there for for teams pulling this otherwise if it stays as is and just missing a play you, you should do it i mean you know if, if, if I, you need to do it but some people just feel like they'd rather have karma on their side i feel like the next play that you return to the field you should have to sit in the same spot you were taken off of and you have to sit there the entire play with your hands in your lap and if you get kicked in the throat <laughs> by a 300 pound left tackle so so that's dead. your problem yeah that's your problem you drink more water really be hurt son or you're gonna be hurt <laughs> yeah you need more electrolytes man and i have yeah. uh putting this on official locked on texas tech letterhead sent it to the ncaa uh rule enforcement office so i'm expecting a response here pretty quick and i'll let everybody know uh what and, i find out and you know the other thing that makes me it makes me want to rip I mean, just just bang my head against the wall is that how many more things and products do we have in this day and age and nutritionists on staff to keep people from cramping? I mean, we got pickle juice. We got the little gel packets. I mean, th- there is more stuff that you can take to prevent this kind of. And, and I, I know that sometimes things just happen and guys just don't drink enough or the body is going to react to a different temperature if guys are really going hard. But. That's the other thing is there's just more stuff out there to prevent this kind of thing. Which is, is pickle why... juice still the like uh, foremost cramp? Well, prohibitive? it's there. There, I, I don't. I mean, there, there's actually products. <laughs> there, it's almost like the five hour energy size of okay. a shot, and it's yeah. like a that. That's like a pickle. But I mean, you know, I, I see them downed all the time. <laughs> I mean, you know, on my sideline. So it's just. But anyway, it, I, I don't. I think most of those were not real and. But it is what it is. This won't be the last time that we see this uh, this season. That's just kind of uh, the state of the sport, the state of that rule. You can't really do anything about it unless they put more ramifications on it. I think uh, I think Joey McGuire noticed uh, based <laughs> yes, on his comments. Did. And no Maybe. wonder I'm impervious to cramps because I got two empty pickle jars, juice still in them, baby. Just no pickles in the fridge because I'm a man that knows when the pickles are gone, the party ain't over. That juice is going to carry you a long way. 
<laughs> and if you didn't know that, now you're one as well. It's full. Of, it's it's full of a ton of sodium. I got to tell you, I've never thought about party and pickle juice in the same sentence. But hey, right. man, you do you, Cowan. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll get together for a few uh, pickle shots here. Yeah, there you go. All right. Deal. Yeah, deal. Appreciate you for your time. Enjoyed it always, my man. Yes, sir. Keep hope alive. And uh, when you're done with Locked On Texas Tech, we ask you, dear listener, to please check out Locked On Big 12 with our guy, Josh Neighbors. Make it your second listen as he takes you around the Big 12 on the daily part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And of course, continue telling friends, neighbors, Foe, family, whoever, subscribe on YouTube to Locked On Texas Tech or anywhere you get your podcast. We'll see you tomorrow for the next round. For the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. It's Locked On Texas Tech.